actually rewarded with a free trip to Japan for talking about how messy I am. Are you gonna help me with my intro? Happy Vlogmas Day 3. I'm calling this, what is under my bed? I already pulled out what's under my bed so I can show you. And I'm gonna do this in the living room where I have a lot of gorgeous natural light coming in on me and it's cloudy and I don't think it's gonna change anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, under my bed is a huge rolling tote that is, oh god, <laughs> very difficult to lift up because it is packed full of stuff. Jor is very interested in what is in it because a lot of it is like stuffed animals. So some of it I'm just going to kind of breeze by because like I said it is stuffed full. Some of it I'll have a story for. Um, a lot of this stuff is toys that I've kept from my childhood um, or memorabilia. I do have another box under the bed that's a lot of stuff from Japan. So I might go through that at a different time, but this large box is stuff that I just have never been able to bring myself to get rid of. I really don't want to. It all fits in this one tote and I have no problem keeping this as something that I can keep under my bed um, and look at and remember good times from my childhood because sometimes it's hard for me to remember the good times. Um, maybe that's a story for another day. <laughs> Jorah is already trying to get in there and I know he is out of frame. This is what I'm looking at here. Um, this is the tote. It's pretty big. Nothing in this is for you. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, well, first thing that I'm looking at is this little blanket. This is actually something that my Aunt Jenny made, I believe, when she was a teenager. And I don't know if she intended for it to be like a Barbie blanket or I think she made it as like a doll blanket. Now my Aunt Jenny is somebody who I never met because unfortunately she passed away from complications to, uh, due to diabetes um, when I was not born yet. <laughs> my mom was 16. She had me later um, at 20, like a month before she turned 21. So um, like I never got to meet Jenny, but this is something that my mom got from her. I love it. I use it a lot with my dolls. So. That's the first thing that pops out. Um, the next thing is a Sebastian toy from The Little Mermaid. Uh, Little Mermaid was my favorite Disney movie growing up. Um, this is one of the first things that I ever sewed. Uh, it's like a little wallet with a button on it and as you can see like, I don't know what this is focusing on, but the stitching on it is like terrible, but like I said, it was the very first thing I ever sewed. So yeah, it was the very first thing I ever sewed and um, cause I thought it was so cool to sew, Granny sewed a lot and I wanted to be able to make cool things too. Here's just a little coin purse. I don't know where I got this. Here's something that I sewed later on. I made this as like a phone case. It has Japanese on it. I think it says cell phone. Um, I made it for like a little Sony Ericsson phone that I had when I was, I don't know, like 15 or 16. Keep in mind, I'm 34 and a lot of the stuff in here I've had since I was, well actually one of the things I'm looking at right now I've had since basically I was born. Um, but a lot of this stuff is from my childhood between like 8 and 14 I guess. Um, so a lot of this stuff is really old, <laughs> really dusty. I'll probably start sneezing at some point. Um, I have a lot of Beanie Babies in here. None of them really have a lot like special memory. So the little dog, the mini Beanie Baby from McDonald's. Skunk. Here's some more mini ones. Jora, this is not for you. You are not getting any of this stuff. The mini turtle, ostrich and rooster. The eye of the big spider. Here is a big turtle. This is also a Thai Beanie Baby um, turtle, but it's like one of the plushy ones. Like it's very like super, super soft. I liked turtles for a time being. Um, 
not as much as I liked pigs and like I didn't start collecting turtle stuff, but I'm, I guess I'm always kind of fascinated by turtles and I'm jealous of their ability to just hide inside of themselves. <laughs> Here is a Thai doggy. He's so cute. A uh, little dinosaur. I think I got this at the Chicago Field Museum uh, when I went in fifth grade. I'm pretty sure that's where I got this. This was my very first unicorn, or very first unicorn. It was, I think, but also my very first beanie baby was this unicorn. Uh, the mini iguana. Yeah, it's a penguin. Um, the raccoon. The scorpion, because I am a Scorpio. Here's the mini hippo. Here's the big iguana snake. I always liked this snake. I thought it was so cool. I'd like try to wrap it around my arm and keep it on my arm, but it always falls off. I promise you this is not all Beanie Babies. <laughs> um, here's the big ostrich. The bull. McDonald's Thai frog. Um, small snort. Goldfish. And small goldfish <laughs> from McDonald's. Okay, here's the big thing that I need to get out of the way. This is a picture frame that my aunt got me when I, I mean I was in my 20s, like mid 20s. Um, it's got chihuahuas all over it because I had Chihuahua Yoshi and he is in the picture there. He is in some of my older videos um, that are still available to see on my channel. I was very annoying in those and I was not relaxed in front of the camera at all. I'm trying to relax still more in front of the camera, um, but back then I was putting on way more of a show than I needed to and man, my voice. I'm sorry if you watch those. I say it's worth it though, just because Yoshi was so damn cute. So if you can get past my voice or just turn the volume down, Yoshi was adorable. Yeah, he was cute. Now, I said that there's something in here that I had since birth. And that is these baby dolls. So I have baby number one who is falling apart she is see-through like you can literally see the stuffing in her i don't know how this is still intact at all <laughs> that's baby number one so when she fell apart too much my mom gave me baby number two <laughs> as you can see she's also pretty thin and worn out <laughs> and stretched out so when she got to this point, my mom gave me baby number three. <laughs> they have Velcro on their hands um, and their chest so they can like hug you and you can do different things with their hands. Um, there's rattles in the feet. This is, oh my god, this is a Fisher Price toy. And oh, you can see the mouths. The mouths are super dirty because my mom would tell me, kiss it, kiss your baby. <laughs> so I would kiss the babies. Oh, I've had these. Well, like I said, 34 years. <laughs> or at least I've had this one for 34 years. Cute little sea lion. Oops. <laughs> Again, I think from the Field Museum in Chicago. Jack-o'-lantern tie beanie baby. Oh, this was one of my favorite toys. Okay, so my mom had a friend named Kathy, and she got me this one year, and I just loved it. I played with it so much. Like, its, it's fur is all worn down. Um, it is a cat who has a dog mask, and it rolls out into a stocking. And I think that she like shoved it full of candy and stuff um, to give to me for Christmas one year. <laughs> okay, this, I don't know what happened to the rubber pig snout, but I made these in seventh grade. These are pig's ears, and I had a rubber snout, and I have a tail that used to be more elastic-y and kind of curled up, but I think some of the, like, the elastic fell off of... The, or fell out of like the stitching because clearly I didn't do a very good job but I'm gonna safety pin in seventh grade we were told you're not allowed to dress up for Halloween and I said fuck that I it was okay my birthday is two days before Halloween it's like my holiday and this is how rebellious I've always been I 
<laughs> I said fuck that. I wore a pink sweatsuit. Head to toe was just like, you know, a sweatshirt like this and then sweatpants. Um, pink, like this color pink. And I wore a headband with these on it. Like there, you, um, you can slip these over like a headband. And the pig snout, which I ended up wearing like around my neck most of the day anyway because it was annoying. But you're damn right I wore a costume. I mean, it was simple. It was a pig. But fuck those school people. I didn't get in trouble because it was, re it was really just like clothes with some stupid little, you know, things on it. But man, did I get looks. <laughs> I got looks in the hallway. I think I'm sure I was made fun of for it. What what was I not made fun of for? I was made fun of for a lot when I was growing up, and I took it really hard. I didn't care. I, I at the time like I just I wanted to dress up. Whatever. So that's the story about that and seventh grade Halloween, and I got a friend because of it. I wanna, a guy who was my friend for probably about 10 years, he was my best friend, um, I haven't talked to him in a while, but he said that he thought I was so cool because I was the only one who dressed up for Halloween. Here's a little blanket that I made, and I tried to embroider for a while. Um, I made this for a pig that I have upstairs in my pig case that I used to carry around. I named her Bacon. I'll have to explain more about her later. She was a puppet, and... I used her as an outlet for stuff that I wanted to say that probably wasn't appropriate. Well, there you go. That's the story. <laughs> um, so I made her this blanket, and it's pretty small, but up here it says bacon, and then this is a heart. Um, that's an M, like for uh, Michigan, U of M, and then I think that might be another little heart down there, a yellow heart. But I just tried my hand at sewing. And actually, the stitching on this looks pretty good. Uh, here's something I picked up in Japan. It's just a little, like, squishy uh, Hello Kitty. Um, I think anybody around my age will probably remember when, for some reason, it was like a craze to make stuff like this. This is um, a bead. We, like, hung these around our belt loops or something, but, like, they weren't this long. They're like little snakes. I just made this one ridiculously long because I'm excessive. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to focus on that, but you get the idea. It's got the eyes and comes to a point. It's just a little snake head, and I thought it was cool to make, like, a giant one. And then it's, like, rattler at the end. It's all silver. I think I was just bored and had a lot of beads and ribbon. Oh, this is a little frog. Wow, he's still kicking. You put him in water, and he'll propel himself. Okay, Jora. None of this is for you, dude. I'm so sorry. This is Sleeping Bear Dunes drum. This is something that I got as a kid. It was like in one of those souvenir shops. Don't come at me. I was a kid. Okay, here are some bitty babies that I did keep in cases. Um, this is the Peace Bear. Oh, this is going to be fun to put all this stuff away. <laughs> Somebody bought me the Princess Diana bear. Um, I don't know who. I this I I hope that this is worth a lot of money. Well, we're halfway going we're halfway done going through the box. Oh no, her face broke. Okay, so this is a doll I got in Japan. Get my face out of there. She's a like a traditional Japanese doll, but her face is like. Oh, it's like peeling. It's painted and the paint is peeling off. That's unfortunate. Maybe I can repaint her face sometime. That'd be kind of cool. Well, he's very interested in this. This is a little Victoria's Secret pink dog. Just cute. Uh, here is a bowling trophy <laughs> from when I was in fifth grade. I was 11 years old and I bowled with a kid named Adam. We got first place. It wasn't like especially good. Like my average, I think it was like 106 at the time or something like that. Like low hundreds. And yeah, we took first first place. Cherry Hill Lanes North, 1996 to 97 kids stuff. <laughs> so fifth grade bowling uh, bowling team trophy right there. This is a name tag. I was Samantha Carter from uh, Stargate SG1. 
one year for Halloween. Oh, here's a Stargate patch. I gotta put this on something eventually. Oh, this is a cigar box full of like memory type stuff. Let's see what's in here. First thing, a Green Day ticket from when I saw them at Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids. This was in 2005. <laughs> I think it's Nimrod. Green Day's Nimrod um, recorded to a cassette for me. Oh my god, a key <laughs> to my first car. It was um, a 1995 two-door turquoise Ford Escort with like the seat belts that automatically go around and latch into place for you. Ugh. Yeah, don't miss that car. <laughs> From Chelsea Handler, no shit. That's cool. I saw her at Meadowbrook uh, Music Festival in 2008. Oh, American Idiot, I saw the Detroit Opera House in 2012. That was a really good play. It's just a ton of concert tickets, some articles. There's a lot of like little things in here now because they all kind of sink to the bottom. All right, this is the very first Barnes & Noble Nook. I don't know why it's in this box. Here is a drawing that a friend of a friend did of me in 2015. I just thought it was cool and I threw it in the box. Oh, this is Mike's um, actually. Um, this is his ticket to the Winter Classic. Uh, this was when the Red Wings played Toronto Maple Leafs in 2014. January 1st, 2014. This is before we were dating. At the big house in Ann Arbor where the Michigan Wolverines play football. So they set up an ice rink on the field and had hockey there. And Mike said it was one of the coldest days of the year. And that he was miserable and he drank a ton of hot chocolate that day. <laughs> so one day I might show you my blankie that I slept with until I was 22. As embarrassing as that is, it was falling apart at the end. And this is like a recreation of that. My aunt made the blankie for me. And she still had this fabric, this material, um, and even the ribbon, the nylon ribbon that goes around the edge. And I love this. I am, I cried when she gave it to me. My blankie that I slept with looked like this. It was like this beautiful green color. And I don't know what this blood came from, if that's maybe my aunt's blood from when she was making this, or mine. Um, this is a gymnastics trophy. I have no idea where the little placard is that goes on the front of it. I did gymnastics as a little kid, uh, until I was like six, I think, when we moved back up here from Kentucky, and then I started dancing until fourth grade. This is a little puzzle, and I'm not going to try to put it together. It's set six sides, and it turns into a cube. Oh, I'm so tempted to put it together. Okay, here's a little Yoshi character. I love Yoshi. Clearly, I named my dog kind of after him and kind of after the fact that it's a cool Japanese name. Here's a love is thing with those the little girl and guy keeping your heart in good shape and they're on a treadmill and he's lifting weights <laughs> this is a dokomo keitai denwa i think that's how you say it keitai denwa keitai whatever it's a cell phone it's but it's fate they have these in stores in japan um, like, so you could see what the phone looked and felt like before you bought it. And this is my favorite one. I brought a ton of these, like, fake cell phones home. Because I just love the way that they look and felt. Like I said, it's my favorite one because it's just, it's my pink color. This is my pink. Totally a technophile. I got a few etch sketches in here. Here's one. Two. It's a little bit older. Three, very old, and four, even older. <laughs> All right, here is a Willy Wooly guy. This is something I picked up at a Cracker Barrel. All right, here is Cherry Hill Lanes North 1997 Kids Stuff. I think this was the participation trophy that everybody got, or 
I did that league for a second time. And this was the participation trophy for everybody that didn't get first place. First place, participation. I'm pretty sure I did do that league two years. But this only has 1997 on it. And this is 1996, not 1997. So I'm just as confused. Oh, this is fun. Here's a little beaded necklace thingy, but it's like a purse. And I think I carried stickers around in this when I was a little kid. I just thought this was the coolest thing. It's my little purse. Um, I also played soccer, 1992, Rocketeers. So that's from soccer. These are pretty damn cool. Um, I was in band, sixth to ninth grade. I played the trombone and ninth grade I also played the baritone and I didn't stick with it because I didn't want to do marching band and I really wish I had because I really enjoyed it and I was really good at the trombone but I was a lazy depressed teenager and I was going through a very hard time with my mother um, at that age and we moved to a different town than I went to high school in and it would have been very difficult for me to participate and because I have a lot of hard feelings about that time in my life that I'm not about to process on camera here <laughs> So, um, here's first and second place from, uh, Band and Orchestra Festivals, District 4. I don't know what the District 4 means. Somebody let me know in the comments if you know. Okay, I definitely did it multiple years. 1993. Oh, yeah. There we go. Just gonna go ahead and drop it and break it. I didn't break it. It's plastic. Uh, or acrylic or something. 1998 Kid Stuff Bowling. So... This must have been the participation trophy from the time I won first place. I, me and Adam. Here's a bag of marbles. <laughs> I literally, I found my marbles. Look at that. I found my marbles. Uh, just some pretty marbles that I found at some point. I don't know. Um, oh, here's some really cool magnets that I used to play with as a kid. They're just a bunch of different shapes and... I don't know. I loved magnets as a kid. Here's a draw five poker game. I could sit and play this for hours. Uh, here are some wooden dice. I have no idea what these are from. This is something from McDonald's. Again, a Thai beanie baby. But this is a little chihuahua with a pink um, scarf thingy on. And I think it's so cute and it looks just like Jorah. <laughs> A little girl I guess because it's got a pink thing around its neck don't gender it Andrea patches from the bowling um, leagues here's a 160 game youth associated bowling I don't know whatever Yabba is a little tape for my tape recorder I used to think that I would be stealthy and record things or like take notes to myself you know like you'd see uh, reporters do I I wanted to write my stories um, audibly and then I thought I would go like actually write them or type them up but I don't know I, I think I, I got this because I missed my talk boy um, like Kevin McAllister had in Home Alone 2 he had the talk boy that like you could speed up and rewind and you know make it sound funny and I did have one of those and I don't know what happened to it here's another Soccer trophy, 1991 Rocketeers. Uh, this is a little Casio world clock calculator. It's called Casio Time Face. Um, like I said, technophile. I love technology, which also could explain this. Uh, this is a nightlight that I just think is so cute I can't get rid of. Here's a, I believe, Burger King toy. Boo from, uh, you know, Mario, and a Wii Mote that I think pushes it along. Yeah, it's magnetic. I can feel it. So you, like, push him along. He's on wheels. 
Oh, California Raisins. I have the, the shopping lady. <laughs> One of the original California Raisins. That's awesome. Here's the alien. This is actually like a little coin bank um, from Toy Story. I love this alien. Here's a key from one of my friend's weddings. A little shoe on a keychain. <laughs> Mario! I'm gonna keep him out too. I think he's a Lego Mario. I have a display case upstairs um, that I am putting Nintendo stuff in. I have a lot of my Game Boys out on display. That's what I'm gonna do with this and boo. Those are gonna go in the Nintendo display case. This is a coin. Ooh, with Maleficent on it and some of the bad, um, the villains, Disney villains. It's a coin that my boyfriend, when I was like 13 years old, <laughs> got me as a souvenir from Disney World. Um, I, I love coins. I think this is pretty cool, actually. So I'm going to put it back in its little... Thing that is now broken. Yeah, I, I like coins for some reason. I really do. And actually looking at some other coins in here, um, actual money coins. I don't know why they're in this box, but clearly I didn't want to get rid of them. And I still don't. Uh, there's a bunch of picks down in here too. Not like pictures, but like guitar picks. Did I ever play the guitar? No. I think some of them I got at like concerts. Oh, speaking of concerts, also mics. I'm keeping uh, safe in here. This is a stick that Rise Against Drummer um, dr played with and threw it out into the crowd and Mike got it. And I'm just keeping it in here to keep it safe for him, make sure it doesn't break. And oh, here's another first place band Festival Division 4. Uh, here is a, I don't know, friendship bracelet or something that I started and never finished. A little Indian guy, he's beaded. Oh my god, I should carry this. <laughs> I even signed it. It is the always right card. <laughs> I gotta laugh at this. Okay, let's see, the official always right card. This card entitles the person or perfect specimen of a human being who carries it, the God-given privilege of always being right. No matter what you say, think, or do, or what the issue or question is at hand, bearer is indisputably correct. To argue or defend an opposing idea will prove futile and leave you frustrated and worn. So save your own sanity, give in and give up. Authorized signature Andrea Logan. Motto, I'm always right, don't bother to fight. <laughs> Oh God, I love it. It's, I drew. <laughs> I used to work in a movie theater. <laughs> I forgot about this. I used to work in a movie theater, and I drew. Um, <laughs> it says, uh. <laughs> One fine day, the end of Sir Colonel Corn. <laughs> it was a big blow up thing. I'm stabbing it with a knife and it's like pss. <laughs> It was a big blow up thing that we kept in our lobby. And he had this big stupid shit eating grin on his face, this stupid smile. <laughs> Here's my name badge from working at T-Mobile. Uh, this is a little cell phone charm from Japan. Here's a fortune cookie fortune. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's clearly a lot of stuff in here is very important to me. It says, now is the time for peace in your life. Go along with others' ideas. Oh my God, I need that in my life right now. I have a ton of Polly Pockets in here. I might do another video later about all my Polly Pockets. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is a little merry-go-round. Eleven. 
I think that's it, 11. I thought I had more than that for some reason. It's a little bus. 11 Polly Pockets in here. A second place, Orchestra Band Division 4. Oh, is it Division 4? It doesn't say that. Michigan School Band and Orchestra um, something, Association Music Festival. I don't know, second place. Garfield Go Fish. A Juice Harp. For anybody who's not Southern, I don't know if you can hear that. I got my lipstick all over it now. So. All right, I got some little enamel um, pins in here that you know what I'm, I might stick on my pin board. I have a little key. That's not gonna show up. Here's a little uh, pig. And oh, this is from when E.T. was re-released. Um, that's a little pin. I got these at the movie theater. Um, some sort of little clip. The Liberty Bell! I've never been to it. I don't know where it's at. Pittsburgh? Philadelphia? Philadelphia. That sounds more right. I think. I don't know. I think my grandma got this for me on one of her, like, old people trips. Uh, here's a Green Day wristband. Some drumsticks from the Hard Rock Cafe in Washington, D.C. Because I thought it would be cool to have drumsticks. Have I ever played drums? No. Here's some stickers that I used to have on my wall as a teenager. Ever stop to think and forget to start again? I don't suffer from insanity. I enjoy every minute of it. Hard Rock Cafe, Tokyo Ueno Eki in, uh, or Ueno Eki in Tokyo. <laughs> the Ueno Station. Cut the bag. Um, this is like a big scrapbook thing that I don't, oh! <laughs> started to make a Green Day scrapbook. The best band ever! Clearly, they are my favorite band. Um, and I started to put together <laughs> a scrapbook uh, um, devoted to them. Um, this is a puzzle toy that I got at the Chicago Field Museum. This is my most prized possession, and I, I saved it for last. I, I don't think on purpose, but... Um, this I really should have it on display. I really hope my battery doesn't die while I'm explaining this. This is the 2003 Michigan Japanese language speech contest first place prize for high schoolers. This allowed me to go to Japan for free for nine days as a reward for winning the speech contest. I got to go to Tokyo, or Chiba more specifically, um, to see my uh, original host family sister, Nami, and I got to spend one or two nights with them at the beginning of the trip, and then I took the Shinkansen over to Rito, which is near Kyoto, and I stayed with a, a host family over there in their beautiful countryside house um, for a whole week, and then I flew back home. Um, this is all by myself when I was 18 years old. Um, I think it was at the end of my senior year of high school. And this is something I'll always cherish. And like I said, I should have it out on display because this is something that I'm really proud of. I still have the this, this speech written down somewhere. I had to memorize it. And the speech was about my messy bedroom. Yeah, but I, I have been actually rewarded with a free trip to Japan for talking about how messy I am. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm still messy. Um, that second trip to Japan, I picked up this cute little turtle, and I also made this mug. Oh God, live. Sundeiru. I think Sundei? It's I live in the Sea of Japan. It is <laughs> an octopus. And he's saying, I live in the Sea of Japan. Um, and on the back of it, I wrote, I ate this octopus. Or squid, it, it might be a squid, I don't know. It certainly looks like an octopus. I can't remember the Japanese for it. And then on the inside, okay, so there it says, I ate this octopus. Um, on the inside, here is the octopus as, um, a piece of sashimi, or not sashimi, but uh, nikiri sushi. <laughs> and when I did this, my host family thought it was hilarious. Oh, it was in February that I went. It says February 29th, so leap day, 
2004. That's when I went. I was 18 years old. Oh my god, I was so funny. Okay, well, that's it. There's one more little thing in here that I made and my name on a wooden keychain. My camera battery finally died when I was saying that. I hope that you enjoyed watching me go through this box of stuff that I've saved and finding out what type of stuff I've saved. Um, I think that that's kind of interesting what people think is important to them. So this is the aftermath. Here's all the Beanie Babies and other toys. Um, down here in front of me are like the Polly Pockets and um, my blanket. This is the cigar case and some other stuff over here like the Etch-a-Sketch and Nook. Yeah, so um, thank you for watching. I hope you made it all the way through. I'm sorry that this is so long. All right. See you next time.